Hey everyone and welcome back to Prefusion. I am Anish and today we will solve this very interesting question that came on gate 2018 from the EC paper. Actually many people thought it is a control question because uh, like as uh, variables are given as the question is written it seems like a control question but actually it's a mathematics question and a basic mathematics question but like you have to understand the fundamentals really well then only you will be able to solve it. So let's read this question. Consider a polynomial function p of s that is equals to s cube plus a two s square plus a one s plus a naught, where with real coefficients that is a two a one and a naught are all real. Okay, a one. Just hold on. And a naught are all real variables. It is known that its derivative p dash of s has no real root. Okay, it has no real root. So I know the derivative of this. Doesn't have any real root. What does it mean actually? What does it mean to have no real root? So they are asking the number of real roots of p of s. They have given me the information about the derivative of the function. Uh, they want uh, me to ask the information about the actual function. So what does it mean? Has no real roots. What does it actually mean? So if you understand this carefully, root. What does roots mean? If I equate this particular equation, right? If I equate my p of s equals to zero. It should follow. It should satisfy the equation. That is what roots mean, right? That for a particular value of s, it should satisfy the equation. So when does this p of s equ equal to zero? In graphically, what do I mean? Graphically, if I just draw a graph, let's assume any graph, right? This is my x and this is my y. Okay. So I have a graph like this and I have a graph like this. So this is the first one and this is the second one. Just tell me, right now, ask yourself which one has a real root and which one doesn't have any real root. Obviously, one doesn't have any real root. Why? Because it doesn't cut the x-axis. Because by function, right, it is never equals to zero. It is never equals to zero as it never cuts the y-axis for a real value of x. This x, right, is x-axis is a real line, real number line. But this uh, graph two has obviously two roots because it is cutting the x-axis twice, where my value of y is zero for two values of x. So obviously, I have two distinct root. They can be same as well. Sometimes roots can be same as well. When it can be same. When it is touching, just touching the graph, okay, touch, just uh, touching the x-axis, then I have two roots at the same position, okay. So all these things are there, okay. So this is what the roots mean. So uh, if they told me that the p dash of s doesn't have any real root, that means it never cuts the x-axis, okay. That means p dash of s, the function, will Never cut the x-axis. Okay, it will never cut the x-axis. So what is p dash of s? So I have to differentiate it with respect to its own variable that is s. So if I differentiate it with respect to its own variable, p dash of s will be simply three s square plus two a two s plus a one. So this is word actually. This is just like a quadratic, right? Quadratic. <clears throat> Now, in a quadratic, if it doesn't have any real roots, right? We can have two types of graphs. One can be if it doesn't have any real root. So one can be this is let's say this is my p dash of s, and this is my parameter s, right? One graph can be like this. Okay, never cutting the real axis. Other other graph can be like this. One can be in the top hand, top side of the uh, S uh, number line, and other one will be at the bottom side, basically. So, what does this signify? This signifies that my coefficients, right? This coefficient, okay, it has to be negative. Actually, I forgot to write the coefficient here. It should be okay. This is always positive. So this coefficient is always actually positive, right? My coefficient S square coefficient is always positive. So this will be at very high values, right? At infinity values of S, at very higher values of S, this term will be dominating. Because this will uh, provide me more uh, value. So obviously, if this term is dominating and this is positive always, so obviously it will be always this, right? It will always be this first one. It will never be the second one. It cannot be the second one because it is telling for higher values of s, my p dash of s should be negative. But just take an example. Just put s equals to 10 raised to power 7. If you put s equals to 10 raised to power 7, right, you will see this term is dominating. All the other terms you can ignore. You just see that. You'll observe that, right? This term you can. Uh, you'll see this term is dominating, <coughs> and this is something positive because 3 into s square. S square is positive. 3 is also positive. Positive into positive should always give me positive. So I, I will always. <coughs> I will always guess the. I'll uh, always get the first graph. So I have found out the 
like graph of the derivative of the function but can i plot the actual function from this can i plot it the derivative here i am i'm always observing that it is always positive the derivative p dash of s from this particular information i can observe is always positive if the derivative is always positive my function right my p of s p of s will always be increasing okay so my function will always be increasing because derivative positive means it is monotonically increasing right this i have taught in my basis of calculus you have to go and check out my basis of calculus lectures they have taught this very very well so p of s will be always increasing so how can the graph be so for a cubic function right again i have a cubic function and i know the coefficient of the higher order term is positive so obviously at s equals to infinity i will lie somewhere around here right as s equals to infinity i will lie somewhere around here because i will just write down the uh, this coefficient right this is the coefficient it p of s equals to s cube plus a not a square plus a1 s plus a not s equals to 10 raised to power 6 you put s equals to 10 raised to power 6 only you will see this term is dominating all the other term you can simply ignore okay this term is dominating so it will be s cube so obviously at higher values po higher positive values of s this will be dominating at higher negative values of s again and negative values of s also this will be again dominating because minus 10 raised to power 7 again this is larger but in negative side in lower side right so again this term will be dominating all terms you can ignore okay so obviously the graph for extremes extreme points will be something like this in the negative side and positive side and i know another information the graph is always increasing okay so the slope will be always be positive and i know the cube actually the cube graph actually something like this right i i don't know exactly how it will cut the x axis that i don't know okay but if i observe the slope right slope here is positive right slope here is positive when can slope be negative if i have a graph like this if i have a graph like this then if i just compute the slope slope is negative right with respect to uh, the x axis i am going in the negative angle okay so there the slope is always positive slope is always positive so whatever you do slope can never be zero slope can never be zero if slope is never zero right it will always keep on increasing so it will only cross the x axis only once what could have happened is my graph could have been something like this as well right something like this as well this can also be a cubic function okay but this is not a possible case why this is not a possible case because here my slope is positive but here my graph is increasing value of y is increasing right that means slope is negative so slope cannot be negative because this is not possible not possible not possible slope is always positive okay and obviously it has to cross the x axis at least once because i know the higher lower and bounds right because the maximum value p of s has a maximum value of infinity and minimum value of minus infinity right and i know this is a continuous this this is polynomial so if this is polynomial right this will be a continuous function so if this is a continuous function obviously it has to cross the zero else how it can reach from minus infinity to plus infinity it has to cross the zero so there will be at least one root okay but it cannot have more than one roots okay why because slope will be negative that's why and it cannot have zero roots because it has to cross the x axis at least once okay else how will it reach from minus infinity to plus infinity so it will be simply b option b okay this is a very very elegant question and very very great question this is actually a mathematics question not a control system question but uh, yeah uh, if you are very good at mathematics right if you are very good at basics then you will be able to solve it else just by looking at the question this is not like a formula based question right you just put the formula and get the result no this is a theoretical type of question but you have this is an analytical type of question why you have to think actually how to how to proceed in the question that is the most interesting part of this question so i hope you enjoy this question and yeah that's it from my end and if you want to study from us like a lot of content is currently happening on our channel emft full course is running on youtube channel okay uh, and mathematics is there you can watch uh, analog uh, videos are there network control all those videos are there and if you want to study fully from us for gate 2026 you can visit our website prefusion.in there we have full courses for gate and obviously for vlsi placements so yeah i hope to see you in the next video until then happy learning